A NASA spacecraft has successfully blasted off from the U.S. Kennedy Space Center in Florida. One ignition and liftoff. The Europa Clipper probe is on a mission to explore one of the uh, one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. After a five and a half year journey, the craft will enter orbit around Jupiter and take a look at its icy moon. Scientists are sure there's a massive ocean beneath Europa's crust, and where there's water, there could also be life. The probe won't be able to search for signs of life, however. Instead, it'll identify some of the key ingredients that make life possible. Let's get more on this with Keith Cowan, former NASA scientist and editor of astrobiology.com. Keith, good to have you on the program. What is so intriguing about Europa for scientists? Well, Europa is, has more water than Earth does, which is kind of amazing. It's not much bigger than our own moon. And for the past quarter of a century, we've been looking at this world. We've studied it from afar. And it's got an ocean underneath there. And the big question is, what's in that ocean? Is it like our ocean? And this spacecraft, along with ESA's uh, JUICE mission, there's actually two spacecraft going to the Jupiter system. They're going to be looking at these worlds using radar and whatnot to see if there's an ocean in there, if we can see things on the surface that might say there could, if life was there, it could be supported. It's not going to find life, but it will find whether or not there's the ability to support life. Um, tell us about the challenges, though, that await this spacecraft in Jupiter's orbit. Well, first of all, it's very far away. <laughs> Jupiter is hundreds of millions of miles away. And it's going to take a long time to get there. And when the spacecraft, both of them do arrive, there are very powerful radiation belts around Jupiter. So they're going to have to have these fancy orbits that keep it away from the radiation as much as possible, but fly by the moons. And they'll go by 30, 40, 50 times. And of course, at that distance, it's using solar power. So these things have immense solar panels, which when they're completely unfurled, is, is like you know, 30, 40 meters across. And the funny thing about this is that if there are two ships going on an exploration of a new world, an icy world, and if you look at the ships that we sent to the North and South Pole the first time, it's about the same size, except there's no people on these spaceships. And how will the scientists stay in contact with the spacecraft over such a distance? Well, radio. And, of course, uh, it's even you've got a large dish, so you can send some powerful messages back and forth. But you're still constrained by the sheer distance and the long period of time it takes for a signal at the speed of light to go from Jupiter to Earth or a command from Earth to Jupiter. So it's sort of like having a conversation, going out to have lunch, coming home and waiting for the answer. Okay, we'll leave it there. Keith Cowan, always good getting your insights. Thank you.